Good morning, my fellow yogic travelers. Welcome to another episode of the Dharma Tributaries. I'm honoring Michael Mead, mythologist, storyteller. He's been very influential in my life. And one of the things that he reminds me of is the importance of mentoring, both being mentored and growing into being a mentor. One of the aspects of being a mentor, especially as you get older, is to learn to welcome the young people, to accept the young people, to empower the young people. Of course, you're supposed to respect and remember the older people, uh, otherwise the culture falls apart. And you can see in a lot of ways in the United States this rift between the young and the old. The generation gap is the abyss without the mentor. So how do we hold this together? Well, it's what we call radical imagination. You have to think vertical hierarchy. You want somebody who knows more than you in a given field uh, in terms of competence and experience. So the elders have learned to carry the water of life that cools down the hotheads. They've been through the fires of their own life. And now you could say their cooler head prevails in decision making. They want to keep peace. They agree to keep peace. They make peace. They harmonize. So I don't, any longer, I don't need to shoot other people down. I don't need to try to put myself ahead. And I don't have the knowledge that's only based on outward information, externals, measurements. I would have what I would call embodied knowledge the gnosis, stuff that's deep in my heart, deep in my body, deep in my bones. <clears throat> and what I've learned from that is to recognize other people, to confirm other people, to bless other people, to acknowledge spirit in other people. I recognize that everyone is needed where they are, even though sometimes people don't understand how it fits. But first you learn that mistakes are not wrong. It teaches you what you need to learn. So you look back at over your life, and now you have heightened sensitivity, especially to the inauthentic. And you don't want to go there. You don't want to live from that place anymore. So just like ego loss in, in yoga, something in you has to die for you to become bigger. So ask spirit to help this body dance and realize that we've all had different initiations in our life maybe not like the rites of passage that we can romanticize in indigenous cultures but the truth is the parents give us our first biological birth and then if you're lucky enough to find the right initiation then you have the second birth the spiritual birth into a life of purpose everybody incarnates with a dream that they bring with them. It's ready to come out. It's called the daimon. Plato called it the daimon. It's your inner genius. It knows. It carries the destiny with you. And it's what helps you break through the narcissistic bubble that surrounds you and in a certain way gives you a false, partial, but false identity. But your person can't confirm themselves. You know, like King Henry VIII just grabs the crown from the, uh, the priest and puts it on his own head? No, there's supposed to be a right of investiture that the title gets conferred upon you. And then you realize that you've found a way to fit into the world. Then you're fit to be a mentor. Then you give yourself permission. Then the possibility of your talent and the gifts that you came here to share. And it helps to trigger awareness in other people. So learning is a sacred activity. And if you find the thing that you really have passion for, it will provoke eros in you. And here I don't mean erotic in the sense of genital. I mean eros in the sense of relatedness. You're turned on to your eyes, ears, nose, mouth, tongue. All your senses are heightened. You have a sensate experience of, of, of the spirit. And then that becomes the opus magnum, the great work of your life. 
How do I give back all the wonderful things that have happened to me along the way? How do I empower people? So to mentor means to look in the same direction with a person who has passion, recognize their passion, and you're in competition with them. Not like a tennis match where you're on opposite sides and you're trying to win the game, but you're both looking in the same direction. With You're petitioning the same deity, and often it's not the same one as your parents, so you have to break away from the old model and be true to what's in your heart. So I hope you understand that you have the capacity to mentor other people. Think back who's helped you along the way, who's mentored you, who's taken an active interest in your life, and then go thou and do likewise. Pass it on. Recognize the magnificence. And I always like to say, if you can't remember the last time you saw a young person and admired them and told them how wonderful they were, you're probably carrying a little wounded teenager inside yourself. So get the help you need to get the appreciation, the acknowledgement that you deserve, and then pass it on to other people. Peace be with you.